Gordon Clark, number 32, page 43. Reason without faith. The medieval, that is the Roman Catholic worldview, lost its monopoly over men's minds in the 15th and 16th centuries. Two powerful movements combined, or at least competed, to form modern civilization. One of these, Protestantism, renounced scholastic reason and based itself on revelation. The other, the Renaissance, gave itself over wholly to reason and would have nothing to do with faith. This latter alternative will be discussed first, and its development may be conveniently arranged by prefacing the account of the main philosophical theories with a few notes on its form in popular culture. Early Irreligion The effect of, quote, reason, unquote, on the broad aspects of culture, since it includes the many-sided developments of the Renaissance and extends its influence over several centuries, let us say to the French Revolution, is entirely too large a subject for adequate treatment. Certain evidences of hostility to Christianity are all that is pertinent and manageable here. The fortunes of Christian faith had been at low ebb for centuries. A few pious souls like the Waldensians, John Huss, and Wycliffe barely kept the gospel alive, while the great mass of people were sunk in superstition. Yet there probably would have been no surging revolt against the dead forms of Christianity had it not been for the invention of the printing press in the middle of the 15th century. It was the printing press that brought to the people both the New Testament and the Greek and Roman classics. In Italy, where the classical literature first arrived as the Eastern Empire crumbled under the pressure of the Turks, the time was ripe for an intellectual revolution, for it was in Italy that the corruption of the papacy was most evident. When, therefore, the glories of Greece and Rome became known, when that is a civilization that had not been dominated by the idea of God was brought to light, society quickly shed its hypocritical Christianity and became openly pagan. Of course, not all scholarship became pagan. The idea of God was not universally discarded. Not only were the classical authors studied, but New Testament scholarship also was advanced both by the cowardly Erasmus and the courageous reformers. But the Renaissance, as distinct from the Reformation, was essentially pagan. And if this was true of the scholars, particularly the Italian scholars, Mirandola, uh, Ficinus, uh, later uh, Telesius, uh, Giordano Bruno, it was all the more true of uh, Beneventuo Cellini, Machiavelli, and the Borgias. Artistic brilliance, intense conceit, political power, and dissolute riches were not compatible with Christian doctrine and morality. It is not necessary to maintain that the medieval ignorance of the classics was an advantage, nor that the medieval art form was superior to the new techniques. A knowledge of Homer and Virgil and the discovery of the laws of perspective must not in themselves be considered inimical to faith, but the content of art was changing, and the religious themes became less Christian while the pagan themes became more frequent. In literature, Boccaccio, Rabelais, and the cutthroat Villon combined contempt for ecclesiastical duplicity with a disinclination to personal morality. Not all of this paganism, however, should be attributed to a philosophic decision on the merits of faith and reason. Villon and Rabelais are simply the ordinary results of human depravity. Indeed, extenuating circumstances can be alleged for the revulsion from what went under the name of Christianity. Nonetheless, all these men were representative components of the new culture. They were the spokesman and mirror of their time, both influenced and influencing. But the type of more thoughtful writer, who without being a systematic philosopher, would in the long run exercise a wider influence, may be found in Michel de Montaigne. Strange to say, there is a notable contrast between Montaigne and the others in the Renaissance tradition, both earlier and later. Renaissance humanism was optimistic. It did not worry itself with the limits of man's reason. In denying the need of God's grace, it assumed that human resources were adequate for all our needs. The philosophic development yet to be discussed and the burgeoning scientific advances anticipated no checkmate, but Montaigne was not so sure. <laughs>